Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for coming to our Res Publica hosted event. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here at Nesta, hosting Damien, uh, uh, Shadow Immigration Minister Damien Green, MP. Uh, Damien is one of the most uh, innovative thinkers in the modern Conservative Party. Today he will be speaking on a subject that is relevant to every one of us. Our civil liberties and the civil liberties of those around us. Now our choice of venue for this event was quite deliberate. Uh, the National Endowment for Science, Technology and the Arts was set up to explore innovation. Set up by government to support the work of inventors and entrepreneurs. And here in the UK, where there is one surveillance camera for every 15 people, nowhere is the awesome power for good or ill of what innovation can do more visible. It shouldn't, it needn't be this way. First, uh, let me indulge in some history. The British derive our liberty not from uh, a piece of paper or papers, but from something that is common to all of us. Of course, Magna Carta, the 1688 Bill of Rights, were written down, solid documents that we can see and touch. But they themselves were expressions of an earlier common law based on reciprocality, obligation, and duty. They themselves were the expression of an earlier settlement that privileged the idea of a civil settlement or a civil or common understanding of law. As, as common law, the lawyer Blackstone put it, liberties are discovered both powerful and enduring. And the common law has been the guardian and protector of our person and place throughout the ages. Yet, as we are finding, three things make this very English idea particularly susceptible to, how can one put it, the pejorative connotations that go with uh, our, our state of modernity. We might think of it as a somewhat unholy alliance that's a threat to our liberty. The first threat comes from the agencies of the state. It's not just cameras, so large and wide-ranging are the powers of police, of surveillance, of the audit, of the state, that we are overwhelmed by passive intrusion. And what good is the seemingly quaint common law concept of jewellery or lo locally appointed justice overseeing de facto already practiced rights and duties when it comes to safeguarding the rights of the person under this modern settlement. The second is our broken community life. Friendly societies, mutuals, church groups, our associative life is in clear and evident decline. The natural urge to associate voluntarily has been replaced by a so-called third sector, a successful, important, but increasingly homogenized group of service deliverers whose work is incredibly important but whose terminology and practice is often the technocratic terminology of the state. Meanwhile, we see our neighbours less, form fewer active community groups, and suffer the atomising effects of the loss of our society. There can be no commons if there is no community. Whose civil liberties have been most harmed by this breakdown? Damien will be speaking about this this evening. Thirdly, there is the problem of technology and innovation itself. For when we no longer look for out for each other, no, under, no longer understand what we have in common or why it might be important, the state is compelled, ham-fistedly, inappropriately, <coughs> and sometimes even illegitimately, to bind us on our behalf. It uses technology to st step into the breach, and so begets the surveillance and database culture that has emerged in the last 20 years or so. In philosophical terms, under these circumstances, the human commons has become the super commons, the nightmarish panopticon, Jeremy Bentham's prison with windows, patrolled by one guard, yet whose presence would be enough to encourage obedience in those who were being potentially watched, or actually watched inside. All of these things tend to separate us rather than bind us. I mean, what's very interesting is the more the state intrudes in our, in our society, the more it atomizes us, the more it fragments us, the more distrust, enmity, and lack of association becomes the norm. What we wish to do with technology and innovation is use it instead of policing a society that the state has already fragmented, creating new networks of trust and ethos so that the state doesn't need to step in to police the social failure that results from its own action. We want technology and innovation to create trust, 
platform new models of community and to tie and create the social capital that we evidently want and in some sense possess to the locality in which it should be exercised. So removing and obviating the need for state action. In that sense, uh, I believe we can remake the human commons of the past through creating association in the present and technology of the future. For only then can innovators on our side stem the tide of innovation on theirs. For it is not in regulation or auditing that we will develop community innovation and ethos, and so real power, but by the reforming and reconnection of the concrete relationships of the human <coughs> commons, so that the cause of the commons is achieved by technology or aided by technology rather than threatened and undermined it. That is why Res Publica is about to commence an important body of work, Liberty and Innovation, that marries the three ideas, civil society, civil liberties, and a civic orientated technological innovation. And we invite you during and after this evening to come and speak with us and take part in this important work. On that note, I give way to the Shadow Minister for Immigration, Damien Green MP, who will speak on the civil liberties for the poor, the very people who are threatened by our current condition. Thank you.